Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Hopefully, you've had a good time here at Unreal Fest 2025. You've had the opportunity to walk the floor, see some interesting presentations, and I would say enjoy the Florida heat, but it's probably more like the Florida rain. Um, well, with all that said, I'd like to welcome you to my presentation, Supervised Settings Downloading Under the Hood with KWS. So, who am I? Well, I'm Will. I'm a senior software engineer working at Epic. I've been at Epic now for over four years, and I've been working in the software industry for about 10, but I must admit it definitely feels like a lot longer. Um, before working at Epic, I've done a variety of things from working on backend storage controllers to data pipelines. So I've got a real variety of experience, but here at Epic, I've spent most of my time working on what's called Kids Web Services. So you might be wondering, what is Kids Web Services? Well, Kids Web Services, or KWS for short, because who doesn't love acronyms, is a collection of services available free of charge to help developers manage their youth audiences at scale. We have a few key products that are available to developers. AgeGate, so this is a service intended to help developers with tracking and configuring AODC values across diverse global regions. And AODC stands for Age of Digital Consent because again, another acronym, just let's throw them in there. Parental verification. So this is the service that KWS is most known for as it enables developers and platforms to verify the adult status of parents or guardians in any market. It's designed to plug directly into a digital product or account system, work as part of a solution to obtain verified parental consent for features collecting personal information or gate access to something like parental controls. And finally, there's something called consent management. Um, and this is a collection of services that when used together, allow developers to create cohesive online experiences that take into consideration parental oversight and offer parents or guardians the ability to manage their child's digital experience in the developer's ecosystem. So I personally work on consent management and one of the microservices that makes up the offering is something that we call supervised setting service. And this, is, and this service itself is absolutely critical in allowing us to, at Epic to provide a cohesive user experience for miners across many of our different products and experiences. So you might be like, well, what is supervised settings? Well, at a service level, the supervised settings service is a Nest.js application backed by an AWS DynamoDB table. And this service is responsible for storing a user's supervised settings. Um, and these can be configured by a developer to help create a positive user experience, which takes into the consideration the preference of a parent's, of a minor's, sorry, parent or guardian, not a parent's minor. Also. So why do we need supervised settings, right? So why Epic do we need supervised settings? Well, Simply put, it's a way of ensuring that a parent or guardian has a say in the kind of experiences their child has while interacting within our game or any of our controlled ecosystems. So an example of this might be controlling the types of content that they can freely access on the Epic Game Store or, or configuring a schedule for, their, for to be used by a playtime tracking service to limit playtime in Fortnite. So if any of you have children who might have signed up for an Epic Games account, uh, you might have come across the parental control system where you'll be asked to input a pin and then you can modify some settings. And all of this, this behavior is backed by the KWS supervised setting service. But so far, right, it sounds like supervised settings are just for minors or for users with parental controls. So let me ask you, how many of you have Seen this, seen this, played four nights in this screen. One person, great. <laughs> well, if you look down at the bottom there, it says downloading supervised settings. Well, that's because, and drum roll, you all have supervised settings. So yeah, every user account at Epic has supervised settings. And as you can imagine, that is a hell of a lot of users, right? But you might be thinking, well, surely you're just storing user data in a database. Can't be that hard. You might have a lot of users. You might have a few settings. But unfortunately, as it is with all software, it's not quite that simple. It is just a little bit more complicated than that. 
So let's take a look at what happens when a client asks our service to get a supervised settings for a user. Um, and if we take an example, and we take an example of text chat, we can see it has a few options that are available. There's nobody, friends, friends and teammates, and everybody, or everyone, sorry. Everyone, everybody, everybody. That's what I wrote down there, okay. And each of these values has a different level of like what we call permissiveness. And so uh, what do I mean by permissiveness? Well, permissiveness refers to the amount of freedom that a particular value might grant inside your game. So being able to text chat with friends is obviously gonna be more permissive than being able to chat with nobody. And being able to chat with everyone is obviously gonna be more permissive than being able to chat with friends. And this concept of permissiveness is key to how supervised settings operate. So when we perform a read, we'll read the user's data from the database, we'll read some additional configuration, and then there'll be a couple of things that we need to consider before we can return a response back to the calling client. So one of the first things that we need to consider is what we call a preferred value. And so the preferred value is a value that the user themselves may want to set. So if we think about text chat, a user might want to say, well, I, only, I want to be able to chat with everyone, right? Or everybody, I, I don't care, I want to chat with everybody. But then we also need to consider what we call the parent limit. And this would be a value that a parent or guardian would control. So a parent or guardian might want to limit their child to be able to, only able to text chat with their friends. Of course, not every user is going to have parental controls, so for, for this might not be present for every user, but it's something that we still need to consider for those users that do have parent or guardian preferences. And then the final thing that we need to consider is this concept of something we call an enforced limit. So an enforced limit is a restriction that is placed on a setting, often for users in a specific age range or location that the developer might want to restrict. So for example, a developer might decide that for players under the age of 13, neither the player nor the parent can set text chat to anything more permissive than nobody. And so this leads us to what we call the effective value. And by taking into account each of the previously mentioned values, we calculate the effective value. And it will be the least permissive of the preferred value, the parent limit, and the enforced limit. And this is the value that any game client calling the service should respect. So, for example, if we say we have a user preferred value of everyone, a parent limit of friends, and an enforced limit of nobody, then the user's final effective value would be nobody because that's you know, the least permissive. And as you can imagine, there are quite a few variations that, can, that, can be, that we can have here, and there's a quite a few factors that can influence this, like a user's age. And we support a variety of different configurable setting types. So it's not just four options. We can have 10, 15 options. We can have billions. We can have numbers. We can have all kinds of things. So there's definitely a lot of variance when it comes to calculating these effective values. But the biggest thing that we, we need to consider when we're talking about the supervised settings and particularly how it relates to Epic is the scale that we're operating on. So on average, each user has about 70 settings, but depending on what title they're playing, they can have a lot more or sometimes a bit less. So a user that only plays Fortnite is gonna have more settings than a user that only plays Rocket League, but if a user plays Fortnite and Rocket League, they're gonna have even, they're gonna have more, right? And our Dynamo table is growing every single day. Each new user sign up or each new setting that we introduce, you know, adds new and more and more data. And over a week, on average week, we see something like 12.5, 7,000 requests per second. But like, let me be clear, this is like very much like a normal, normal week. If you start considering large, large things, large events like season launches or holiday periods like Christmas, this number can, can be quite a lot higher. And as I mentioned before, this product is just, this is just for Epic products and services. This doesn't actually take into account any of the third parties that also use the supervised setting service as part of consent management. But 
With all these things considered, the average duration for us to get a user setting is about 22 milliseconds, which is pretty quick, all things considered. And there is absolutely no caching involved here. This is just you know pure, pure reading. So with that speed, it kind of is a real blink and you miss it kind of moment for a user logging into Fortnite. So let's just take a quick look. And now we see if I can play the video. There. That's it. Super quick. Like, as you say, it probably took me longer to film the video than it did to actually, you know, for that to actually happen. So, yeah. And so, as I mentioned earlier, supervised settings is part of KWS's consent management offering, which, along with our other offerings like parental verification and age gate, are available to any developer or platform for free at any scale. So, if you're interested, go ahead and check out our website and you can integrate this into your game or service as you wish. Uh, that's it, thanks for coming everyone. <laughs>